Welcome back to the Talosive Tech Podcast, ladies and gentlemen, here for your second episode of the week. Very rare duly. You're welcome, uh, audience. And also, yeah, welcome back. <laughs> and uh, now Mike's with us for uh, more dub-dub talk, I assume. That's probably what we're talking about. Yeah. What's a dub-dub? The dubbiest of dubs. No one's explained to me what dub-dub is. It's a Rick and Morty reference. You wouldn't get it. A wubba lubba dub dub? You need a high IQ to understand dub dub. (laughs) (laughs) Is it like a tub tub? But. Yes. Yes. That's exactly what it's like. So. (laughs) But I think Randy's on the beta now. I have never been more in love with this new feature in. Oh. (laughs) I. I. Guys. Holy. Yes. Heck. I cannot stop <laughs> finding new things. And I'm Really? Yeah. Like I uh it's all that. I mean, I'm sure everyone else has gone through it in depthly, but I decided to put throw this bait out there the moment we found out correction. Uh if anybody listens to the podcast and not watch the tech sh- uh the tech uh episodes every day, then that's um that's weird, but that's correction. You. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You can have two different wallpapers. They don't take over. Correct. You just have to go through. So once we found out we could do that, my illusion with my home screen stays the same. So I was like, yes. ah, say less. Let's boot it up. So I did mm-hmm. put the beta on. And immediately, I, I waited a good 24 hours to like give a full analysis to, to individual people. But this feels... Like a GM release. This feels like like a proper Which is Grandmaster update. for the Yes, yeah, know. sorry. Not sorry, GM. I was thinking about General Motors. <laughs> I'm like, what does this mean? Yeah, sorry. Is it gonna it's explode? A, the the gold master yes. is the uh the final version before it's considered an official actual like build release. It's the same build number. Mm-hmm. Um but uh this feels so smooth, so clean. I have not had any issues at all i've had one bug that they asked me to send a report but i was trying to activate widgets through a 15 step process so i kind of crashed something in the background and i was like oh yeah here's what happened but um the speech to text flawlessly with punctuations and commas and and all that stuff it's so clean now um Hmm. it gets rid of the ums uh hey Hey guys, uh, are you guys ready to record in about 15 minutes? It drops the uh completely and it does the little comma. I need that in real life. That's so cool. Mm. <laughs> FaceTime cool stuff kill the FaceTime does the well. live text, live caption translate, and it it's so cool to see happen in live time. And I try to take a screenshot to show my brother, like, hey, look what and it doesn't record any of that information. It looks like nothing. Mm. So I couldn't. Oh, it leaves couldn't. the subtitles out. Oh, weird. Huh. Yeah. It, it, it screen record or screenshot, it won't log. It, it, it gets rid of it. So I had to go to a mirror and invert You need another like, device. Look. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, every, I don't know. I could, I, the, 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 the keyboard with, with the haptic now, like that, I can't believe I never not had that because now I can't stop. I know. It's so right? smooth. Like, oh. So good. It is. No, I, I don't know why thing. they took so long on that feature. Because diminishing returns, you know, they could put so much more into this, and they're just, they're just trying to make every update feel worthwhile. They have all this stuff ready to go. Ever since you said that, Drew, it's so. Oh sure. It's so true. That's that. Like all this stuff is like this did not need to take three years to to perfect or what have you. The weather no. app though. They, now you have that dark sky integration even more so where when you go into the app and you go to each little cube, you click on it and it gives you like full analysis based off of the time that you want to even mm. hit the time on of day for the weather. So I think the weather app is actually a, a genuine revamped weather app. Would not know on the iPad because I'm not going to touch the iPad. This, <laughs> this, this iOS thing with the lifting of the images, flawless of 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 outlining people and cutting it and yeah, the landscape spooky. face id i mean you name it i love it and this completely makes ipad obsolete for me mm. 
<laughs> I'm around the same camp at this point. All the thumbnails you guys have seen from my channel over the past week have just been off the phone. Ever since I got the betas, I didn't do any thumbnails using the iPad anymore because there's no point. The masking works too dang well now on, on just the regular Photos app. I can, just, I can download any picture now that I want to use something for, uh, like the thumbnail for the new MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. I was just like, I want to do a thumbnail with a transparent, you know, colorful background. So I just lift those laptops right out of the picture and I can just have a transparent version and it masks it way better than I could. Um, and before, you know, when you needed that kind of masking detail, it made sense to use the iPad because it's bigger and you can use the pencil. But now that that masking thing is just so good, it's just, it's easy to make thumbnails on the phone. It's like quicker and uh feels easier and uh the ipad is is just sitting under my desk now and not being used and i don't i don't know what i'm gonna use it for to be honest anymore i don't i don't have much uh use case for it because my phone is already a pretty big display and uh it has picture in picture now which i use quite a bit so i watch youtube and use discord or use twitter alongside it and that's enough multitasking for me it's not split screen, but I can swipe between apps just with the home bar at the bottom. So I just use Discord and then swipe again. Now I'm on Twitter, then I swipe again, now I'm back on Discord. Like, it's so easy now. Um, yeah, iOS 16 has impressed me. That was that was by far From the most I've exciting seen, thing of the keynote. It's impressive. Everything that I see yeah. out of it looks awesome. Uh, especially what you just highlight, <clears throat> highlight with, like, thumbnails and all that. That interests me a bunch. Uh, but yeah, it sounds like the iPad is definitely, I don't know, is it kind of just literally becoming a TV tray for you to eat food off yeah. of at this point? A very smart TV tray or something like that. Uh, I use mine for drawing. Calculatorless TV tray. Mm. Yeah. Mine is quite literally it's just a tablet I think... that I draw on and... I don't know. I, I would think that I'd maybe use it for like home control, which it sounds like is going obsolete as well. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> mm. I, d I don't know what to do with it besides use it as the little note taking thing that I do for movies slash drawing thing I do when I'm at a supercharger. Uh, I don't know. But to be it honest, it sounds Mike, like the iPhone has gotten a whole lot more powerful. What your your mm -hmm. your iPad Mini will serve its purpose with with a dedicated, you know, stylus to, to shade color and all that stuff. I, I think when I need to use procreate, cause that's, that's my app of choice. Uh, if I, when I need to use it again at some point, I will break out the iPad for it. But today now more than ever, I wish I had the iPad mini because my iPad and your iPad with interface is now there's nothing pro about mine. <laughs> it's just, cause I don't have an M1 chip in it. There's literally nothing. Most people don't. I'm sure it's a tiny sliver of the market. Like the best-selling iPads are the budget ones, and now the iPad Mini is cool and awesome. But that's not getting Stage Manager or anything because yeah. it doesn't have M1. And the number of people who bought the brand new iPad Air and the brand new iPad Pros has got to be probably something like 10% of total iPads. It's got to be like a tiny piece of the total iPad user base yeah. and their software locking that to for one I've tried stage manager on Ventura that's the other update is I'm, I'm using the beta on my iMac Pro to record video through my iPhone um, so hopefully that gets used in the podcast surprise you know, a... I wasn't going to say nothing till the yeah, end to surprise. see if anybody noticed <laughs> <laughs> yeah hopefully they noticed but if not yeah I'm using my iPhone as a video feed and it's still a little buggy uh, it seems to be crashing our video call every so many minutes. Uh, the iMac Pro just drops Wi-Fi and comes back, and it causes a hiccup. Um, I don't know if it is because of Ventura, but it probably is. It wasn't doing this before, and my MacBook doesn't have this issue. But still, like, the Vent Ventura has the stage manager feature, and I... I can't really find a good use for it. Like, it just kind of keeps windows arranged in a particular way, but I don't see how that's much better than just going down to the dock and opening the windows 
Or it's not that much different from uh, having multiple desktops, which is a thing Mac OS has had for a while. You can use multi-touch to have certain windows on this desktop, and then you swipe to a different one and swipe back. I don't really even use that very much. I find it just quicker to... I'll click on the app if I want to use it, and that'll jump it to the front of the windows. Stage Manager, I guess, is just a slightly cleaner way of doing that, but it occupies space on the left side of the display. And it goes away if you push the windows to the full left side, which I normally do. So it, it kind of defeats... It, it just kind of takes up more screen space. Uh, so yeah. I don't I don't find it particularly... And that's on a 27-inch display. And yet yeah. most M1 iPads are 11 inches. It's going to be like all this buffer yeah. zone around the app. Like, I don't... I don't find it particularly useful, so it's not even that I'm jealous that certain iPad users get it. It's just a bizarre thing to software lock, in my opinion. Yeah, I feel personally that Stage Manager. Um, I was trying to be more objective now, as opposed to when we did the recap. I would use it, maybe, and correct me if, if I'm not understanding how this works, Drew, because I'm not running it, uh, Ventura. I would use it for a situation. That's happening right now. I have Discord running our, our call. I have OBS right next to it. Uh -huh. So I can check my, my meters and show that I'm still recording. Me too. I have mes yep. iMessage up because uh, uh, for most – well, actually, I don't even need to have it up now. But normally our correspondence to our listeners and viewers is when, like, Mike or Drew, or we, we want to send something to showcase what we're talking about. We'll shoot in, in our group text. So I have iMessage normally up. And finally, I have uh, – Finder open so I, I can just make sure I'm watching that my OBS recording is being fed to the right folder so I can move that. So I have four things simultaneously running, and I think maybe I would use Stage Manager in a way where the other three would be propped to the side if I could still see that everything is still running smoothly, which most really would just be OBS verifying that it's still running and uh, I'd maybe look at messages to see if something was coming through, but realistically. I'm doing it just fine right now as I've been for years and just having little windows kind of put to the side and I'm like, all right, I, I can see everything fine. So yeah. that's me trying to find a reason to utilize it. You don't put it. it in a separate desktop for a reason. Yeah. No. So maybe that's what I I'm using nice... if that's how it works. But I don't know. Mm. I think it's a nice other way to organize information, which I think more options is better. So it gives people a way to, if they want to have it, kind of like how Randy was describing it for recording podcasts in that way they can. Or if they just like the way it looks, they could do that. But the utility mm -hmm. definitely goes down with the amount of empty space that it generates. And you're not utilizing your whole mm -hmm. screen. And it's kind of forcing you into this organization that isn't the most optimal for if you want to do a certain task. Uh, I don't know. I don't really have a problem with it from what I've seen. I, I don't have the beta on anything. I Typical iPhone 11 Pro and air that mm -hmm. have nothing going on well, with the beta. You won't get stage manager until Ventura, right? That's the only device you have that can run it. Because yeah. you don't have an M1 iPad. Yeah. Nope. Because you're a normal human uh, being. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're a reasonable I person, who doesn't need an M1 iPad. <laughs> yeah, not for the tech, just because it looks nice and it works well on a a flight and all that. That's all I need. Nothing else. But from what I, like I see, Apple things Pencil are pretty features cool. Are... It's disappointing that Stage Manager doesn't have the utility that people want. But yeah, I don't necessarily think that Apple shouldn't have done it. Uh, I still think mm. it should exist just because options are nice. <laughs> and that's something that mm -hmm. Apple sometimes doesn't offer. They kind of force you into, here's how you do it. It's very simple. Uh, where, mm -hmm. it, I don't know, it, it gives me a little bit of an Android vibe in regards to, like, you can do the same task but a different way, which maybe mm -hmm. that's sacrilegious to call something that Apple does a little bit more like Android, except they do it all the time no, that's with their what, phones now. That's, <laughs> that's what Dub Dub's all about, is how we implement an Android feature in a better way. I mean, that's really all that you can do at this point. Uh, phones have yeah. been out for so long. If you watch Google I.O., a lot of it is them implementing iOS stuff. So all they can really do is implement each other's features in an arguably better way and try to top themselves. The only reason I've found DubDub more exciting is because typically a lot of people get the new iOS, whereas the new version of Android, 
It's a lot harder to get on most Androids. It kind of depends on which one you have, and it's going to be a different release cycle depending on if you have a Samsung or a OnePlus or a Pixel. So it's like, they're both coming out with cool, exciting features, but when you get those, is going to be more scattered for the Android release, whereas iOS, it's usually a bit more clear, which um, iPhone 7 won't, I guess, which is kind of yeah. surprising. Kind of, we were wrong on that one. It's we up there. Maybe I iPhone 7 was going to get it, but hey, two, two, it is half two Apple's the credit. iPhones ago. Huh? We're, we're hitting iPhone 14 this year. Yeah. Seven is half of that. So it's like the mid, the midpoint in the whole iPhone history. You know, uh, having time to sit on, I, I rewatched the keynote again to see, like, did I miss anything? Uh, how was it going? We, oh. Listeners and viewers, we spent a pretty good decent of a segment on EV talking about CarPlay. So if you want to hear our extended thoughts on that, you know, <laughs> plug, yes. plug, go check out EV. Uh, so we're not going to talk about that here. But um, one thing that CCS I was kind plug. of <laughs> it's very seamless. Uh, one thing that I am a little confused about uh, and you're good. You're good with this type of synopsis, Drew. So I want to get your thoughts on it. Rewatching okay. the keynote, I did not find anything genuinely that appealing for my taste about watchOS. And I wonder if that's intentional mm. because we might have a redesign maybe. I'm, I, at this point, like, why, watchOS normally tries to do something to be like, look at the, And I feel like watchOS, or maybe... Apple Watch as a whole is going down the path of uh, of iPad where it's like you really do not need to upgrade, update, nothing. It's good as is. And iPhone and Mac, that's that's where you want to be on the latest and greatest and get the latest and greatest <laughs> hardware to go with the software. Watch OS, watching the guys like, you know, I would have been fine with what I had on the Series 4, to be honest, to be completely honest. I don't mm -hmm. feel invested anymore about apple Watch. not that i'm hurt the way ipad hurt me i just no there's it won. Yeah, there's a difference it's good enough i think there's a big difference yeah the difference is watch os takes advantage of the hardware to the best of its ability my one my one little caveat to that is third-party watch faces i think that would probably take it to the next level i've never but heard that before for whatever Drew, reason apple that. doesn't <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not the kind of person that would probably use a third-party watch face, but I feel like that's the last straw. I feel like once they do that, they can't really... Because all they could really talk about with watchOS upgrades was, here's a couple new watch faces, and activity tracking is getting more specific. It's getting more accurate, which was very, very niche and kind of... It was I also know, kind of expected. Narrowed in on a... uh, of course, it's going to get more detailed. That's that's how it's done every year. Um, if it if, if if activity tracking didn't get more detailed, I think I would have been more taken back by like, oh, do we just have all the information recorded? But knowing mm -hmm. Apple wants their Apple Watch to be like a health monitoring device, as well as fitness and everything else for it, but they really want to lean into the medical field through the Apple Watch. It's almost like an expectation mm -hmm. that activity tracking would just improve. So for me, I was not like, whoa, nice. Now you know when I'm in RAM. It's like, eh, you know, there are dedicated devices that do that today. They're not doing anything necessarily new. It's just features that they can now bring to to the products that they sell now. Fitness tracking and all that is, is that's niche within itself. And to my understanding, mm -hmm. and I couldn't really see a difference in the keynote, but to my understanding... You need to have Fitness Plus to utilize some of those features. So I really don't know what Apple Watch OS now is leaning into. And so my, my, my suspicion is that we're going to see new, real new information come fall time with the new watch. That they'll be like, ah, see, now this will come out with the new watch OS and... You get all this other new thing, and they're like, oh, okay, I now you want to get... I don't think do so. Do you? Oh, do you? Oh, tell me. <laughs> okay. No, I... Yeah, no, I I think that this is a side effect of a, of a platform maturing. It's, it's what happens when you take full advantage, because there's 
uh, the watch is the tiniest display Apple works on. You know, there's very little screen real estate. You can't really go all in with multitasking. Um, you can go all out with watch faces, which they have lots of watch face options, and they've kind of customized that to crap as much as they can. And you have your health monitoring, you have your notification delivery, you have your apps, which there's not very many useful third-party apps in the first place. So it's not it's not that they're giving up or they're running out of uh, or that they're running out of steam it's just that they've done everything they can with this device and that results in it being very minor and very incremental and it's it's the same thing with iphone and hardware it's like there's only so much hardware improvements you can make you reach a point where it's like i don't know how to make this any better so every generation starts to seem closer and closer to each other and uh I think it's okay with the watch because there's not some like obvious clear thing that I think would make the hardware way better if they just did it. Uh, I think they've, Kevin's done an amazing job taking advantage of the hardware that's there. So yeah, watch, I have the beta on my series seven and uh, I installed it and found very few differences. I'll admit there's not that much that changed. The notifications are redesigned, which is nice. Uh, so they don't take up the whole screen they just are mm -hmm. a little drop down and they look a bit more uh, clean. You just kind of have the icon and the text is, is less complicated than the old notification design. And when you're using the QWERTY keyboard, which I use quite a bit, there's now predictive text, hey. uh, which speeds up the process. So it's you can be writing something and it's, you know, do you want to say this next? Do you want to say this next? And it's usually pretty accurate. So that makes me even faster typing on the watch it's just little things here and there that's like okay that's nice that's kind of cool but um i think this is the new norm I, I don't think they have some secret update they're saving for the series 8 or anything i i think i mean you might get a body temperature sensor on that watch and then that will be an exclusive feature for the new series 8s and stuff but yeah. uh that's not going to impact our watches that's not going to impact everybody yeah. else that's just that's just going to be a software selling point they have to so bake into watch OS because the hardware is there, but mm -hmm. yeah. Do you? I was uh, talking with. I mean. Oh. I was gonna say I was talking with a few people on the Discord earlier today, and someone asked, "Can you charge the Apple Watch on a regular wireless charger?" And the answer is no. But I thought that'd be a nice change mm -hmm. that they can implement in Series Eight is either decreasing the bubble on the bottom to like allow for more contact with the coil in there uh or all this would be maybe a, a bad one but altering current magsafe models so that they've got a dip in it so you can put the watch into the magsafe dish i guess in a way mm. and then it could charge that way which would be cool because in that way you don't have to no one has to or sorry not no one Everyone doesn't have to buy MagSafe Duo and be like, oh, I've got the mm -hmm. Apple Watch thing and the Puck thing for the phone. Instead, now it's just you have one MagSafe Puck, and then it's just got a little dish in it for the watch if you want to charge the watch off uh, cycle with the iPhone, which I think would be nice. Mm -hmm. Or at least being able to put on any yeah. other charger so that way you're not restricted to your little mags or not magsafe but your little apple watch puck or your magsafe duo so that's something that i look forward yeah to i remember suggesting eight. that i i was wanting it for years but i have to believe that either they want to preserve their magsafe duo sales or there's a there's a hardware limitation with the size of the coil because the apple watch inductive coil is a lot smaller than most cheek coils are so if you try to tinker that it doesn't work reliably or it doesn't work as well you know i feel like the iphone wireless charging has kind of emulated the apple watch now with magsafe that was the magnets were a thing on the apple watch since gen one way back in 2015 it was like this inductive clip and they cupped onto each other and i'm not sure there's a there's an easier simple way for them to make it backwards compatible so that you could make it chi capable but also work with the old chargers which does cause a lot of e-waste if you're like sorry now all your old chargers don't work or um if there's even a way to get the coil to work 
reliably at that size because Apple watches are pretty tiny, smaller than even mm-hmm. a lot of the smart watches they were competing with. So, yeah, I, if it's possible, I hope they do it. I think that would be great, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't change watch OS as much at the end of the day. I have a question for no. you, Drew. Does yes. the new beta on watchOS, um, I, I run with the portrait mode uh, wallpaper uh, for the face, for me personally. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And it has that, that little parallax effect where the, it's tucked behind, the time is tucked behind the, the subject, the, like the yeah. iPhone does now. Does that information have customized uh, fonts the same way the lock screen on iOS does or no? I'm going to guess it probably doesn't, but I'll check to make sure. Because I use on, on the um, iOS now, oh, I can't. I've moved over to those multiple line uh, versions where it, it looks like this. Uh, yeah. I use, oh, well, I guess it's not really focusing, but I'm using multiple lines. Uh, I, I like that face just because uh-huh. it's, so, it's so abstract. It's out there. It's like, ah, yeah, why not? It's up there. And it felt like the lock screen or maybe I, iOS in a way is 100% taking cues from from watch OS in the sense of little notifications oh definitely uh, that that lock screen yeah. has it there so if they but they took it one step further within you customize uh, the shading of the color that you want and and you can have multiple home screen or lock screens the way you can have multiple watch faces so maybe Apple Watch will, if not now, maybe it's taking cues from the iPad and we'll see customized fonts next year, <laughs> unless they're doing yeah, it now. I'm looking, I, I at, I'm looking at the watchOS 9 preview because I guess you have to add portrait mode watch faces through your iPhone. You can't do it off the watch. And mm-hmm. my iPhone is being used for the camera right now, so I can't, ah, I can't right. add it. But on the preview page, there are multiple fonts for... The portrait mode uh, watch faces. Mm. So I think it does. Oh. I don't know if there are well, as many fonts as the iPhone lets you have, but I see more than the beta one design. right now to see because I know, I know, I'm sure I can't push it to my watch. Maybe because I have uh, iOS 16 beta on here, maybe I can see, maybe I can see something with the, oh, yeah, I, I see the fonts. They were there before. Yeah, those ones were around. They they, they have been around since uh, now because I remember playing with those fonts. I uh, maybe I'm being too picky with it. I I wanted that cohesion of the same uh, types of fonts that's on iOS. Yeah, to I get what you to mean. The watch. Yeah, just because I'm using the same wallpaper that anyway. Would be nice. I felt. But yeah, I'm just being picky. Never mind. All right, that was really my only software question. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna put the beta. You 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 don't you haven't you haven't convinced me on it. I don't feel like I need to. So. I didn't notice really. I, I installed it when my watch battery was low. I put it on the charger and it was like, you know, install update. And I was like, oh yeah. And then the next day I woke up and it was already done and I put it on and I started using it. And then I was like, I got a different notification animation. And I was like, oh yeah, this is on nine. That's right. So there was no like instant, yeah. oh, this is the new version <laughs> or anything like you have with iOS. Yeah. The second the screen comes on with iOS 16, you're like, oh, this is different. Ooh. You know, the font's all different. The face ID dissolves now instead of showing the unlock animation. Yeah. Um, so there's all these instant changes in the notifications are at the bottom now, which I've already gotten used to. It feels better that way. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think everyone needs to get in a rush to try watchOS 9. There's honestly very, very little changes. Um there's it's kind of hard to remember all the cha- uh, both the changes they made i should say <laughs> i should mess around with mm. the new watch faces uh there's some there's some cool ones i kind of like but uh i just like this pr- uh pride watch face too much this is this is too much fun to, to uh, like, click around my, my wife and i have been running that you click watch around face. and the yeah. the digital crown will uh move side to side and kind of yeah play the play the lines like a harp it's it's too satisfying oh. i don't want to get rid of it oh but, my watch face locked yeah oh. hmm. yeah i'm boring i just have the regular infographic so <laughs> well you'll still get it because you don't yeah. have a series three I, like my wife does I, 
<laughs> yeah, this is what kind of hypes me up with you guys doing the beta because I get to see all the cool things that you guys get to mess with, but with none of the repercussions that might happen of bricking your phone or <laughs> yeah. computer or whatever until another update comes True. out or something else. So it's very Honestly, exciting Mike, hearing this. If you were thinking about doing it on your phone, this is maybe the only time I would have ever said it's good <laughs> enough to, to, to run solid. a beta. It's wow. so, it's so smooth. The, the, I was playing around with the texting uh, with Drew on editing the text and then deleting it. I was just like, oh, this is so cool. I really like this update. The update I wasn't expecting, but the the one I'm really happy that we have. This this iOS update is so cool. And it's it just it's weird that it's not you know, crashing because it feels like it's a big update, but it's just little things. There's nothing under the hood that's been re yeah. re engineered, I guess. I would have thought that this uh iPhone as a webcam thing, I would have thought that was the next universal control. It was like, whoa, that's so cool. Oh, it's not ready yet. Oh, it's not ready till the fall. <laughs> and then Ventura comes out. Oh, no, it's not ready till the sprint. And they push it out. And it, I was fully expecting it to be the next universal control where it's just not ready for like a year. And day one, Gen 1, it's out and it pretty much works flawlessly. The only thing that doesn't work is the desktop view. No matter where I put the phone, it just doesn't capture the desk. And maybe that'll be universal control. Desktop view <laughs> won't work until yeah. May of next year. But uh, yeah, that felt like they were I jumping was the shark. shocked. Yeah, they were getting ahead of themselves. I was purely shocked how well it worked. You don't have to have the phone plugged in, and it still captures a 1080p, 30fps, really high quality video feed. And the phone can be like. 15, 20 feet away from the computer and it will still <laughs> capture the video. So your phone can just be out moving around and it just it just keeps the feed going and it's accessible by any app. So I'm not using FaceTime for this. You can you can access the camera through OBS as well as the microphone, which Dude. I don't know if they mentioned. So you can use the Dude. iPhone mic through OBS or Discord Stop like it. I am right Stop now. Stop talking, Drew. No, it you're going to make me do it. I'm gonna it's break my this computer. super portable. Uh, <laughs> this is why it's uh, nice to have a backup Mac. I'm glad the iMac uh, Pro is here to do the testing. The one downside of Ventura, I will say, is that the iMac Pro fans right now are running at full blast. And this is not a very big room. So it's heating up everything. And I'm running two apps. It's OBS and Discord. And on my MacBook, I have Twitter, iMessage, Safari, Chrome, OBS, Discord. Silent. No fans running, perfectly fine. But the That's iMac Pro Intel is like chips doing its thing. <laughs> running That's two apps. That's not Ventura. That's Intel. You pulled That's it just out Intel, of retirement. Yeah. Did you expect it to be like <laughs> breezing through this? Hopefully. Well, I've done OBS recording on it before, and it usually is not very power intensive. But now it's like, oh my god, I can't do this. But uh, I'm so, grateful. It. This is like the oldest Mac that runs Ventura. I think is. I think you're right. Is the 2017 iMac Pro. I think the 2017 yeah, MacBook Pro. Because 2016 do it, but... has been cut from the line. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it Drew, doesn't support it anymore. So. Your your yes. continuity camera thing then. Um. And so talk me. How, how does it work? You, are you just you bring the phone close to it and it just it has like a, something that comes from. Doesn't the, need the, to be very close. Does something come from the top Does right it, corner like, saying pair or anything like that? Or what happens? With yeah, that? an option did pop up. I'm trying to remember what it said. I opened FaceTime and it had a little toggle pop up that said, hey, okay. you can use your iPhone as a webcam. Do you want to try that? And I hit try and yes, it please. defaulted to the iPhone. What's also interesting is when you switch it to portrait mode, it automatically rotates and crops in. It won't capture a portrait mode version of your webcam mm. Mm. on the iPhone, which is potentially frustrating for some people. But if you're a diehard, everything needs to be shot in landscape, it's kind of nice. Because if you mm. switch to portrait mode, it just crops into landscape now. So it's zo super zoomed in. But uh, mm. the quality difference is extremely noticeable. You pick up on it. Right away, because you're used to webcam quality. I know because I'm recording on both as a backup. I still have my MacBook recording. 
and I can see what the MacBook webcam looks like, and then I see what the iPhone looks like. It's like night and day, super noticeable quality difference. And then in Control Center, you can switch on uh, Studio Light, which works really easily. Um, and just kind of highlights the subject and darkens the background, which once again is one of those things I'm like, why didn't we have this sooner? And uh, Center Stage also works perfectly, uh, just like it does on... Uh, iPad and on Mac and I'm used to every time I tested center stage it was on a device I was reviewing I was like oh this is really fun I love center stage but I gotta send it back or I gotta sell it yeah. I can't keep this but now I'm finally using center stage and I'm like I don't have to get rid of this I can keep it like I can just have center You'd stage have to pay $2,000 it's just there yeah it's just there now, and it works really well. It works just like it does. Um, I think the field of view on the iPhone's ultrawide is a little bit narrower. If my memory serves me correctly, the iPhone ultrawide is 120 degrees, and I think the center stage cameras are 122. So it's like slightly wider. Well, a two degree difference I don't think is very noticeable. Yeah, it still does this thing where the Wi-Fi disconnects and crashes for a second but now universal control isn't working so i'm not really sure how i'm gonna uh hit stop recording on obs now i guess i'll find out at the end of the show <laughs> i'll just unplug yeah. i'll just unplug the mac and see what happens but yeah so there's still some bugs here and there there's no way to uh switch to just the ultra wide lens and not use center stage in case mm -hmm. anyone was wondering if you could just use the ultra wide. no it's like if if you're not using center stage, it defaults to the main camera sensor. That's it. As soon as you turn on center stage, it goes to ultra wide, and uh, no way to access the telephoto, no way to do it in portrait mode, which some people may have liked. Um, it would be I nice would have for liked TikTok. for this show. Yeah, if you want to record your TikToks directly to the Mac for some reason, but yeah, it it works incredibly well for a day one beta and i'm very tempted to put it on my macbook pro so that when i do my uh, behind the scenes streams i could have center stage as i'm recording which i've always talked about doing for the channel members because it, it would be a lot easier to follow me setting up the lights and cameras and stuff if i had the pov the camera moving around with me but i might even use these for the food streams in the future because mm. i can take the iphone with me so I could still stream through OBS and have all of the settings I want and have all the bitrate settings, but take the iPhone, you know, to the stove and to the countertop and just move it around as needed. And that fire. wireless connection, yeah, it, it, should, it should stay sustained if it's working. It's working really well with the iMac Pro. Like, it, it can maintain a consistent video signal from 15 feet away. With the MacBook Pro, I would assume it would be even better because True. this is all Apple Silicon. And, and I was thinking as it is right six. now. But yeah, if you can move your MacBook Pro wherever, then yeah, you've got a mobile camera rig that uh, outputs directly into OBS and which then goes yep. to YouTube or wherever else. And you don't have to do anything. Yeah, you don't have to use the iPhone as a iPhone anymore. Now you're, it's just becoming more camera than phone. <laughs> Aha! Uh -huh. yeah. They heard me after all. <laughs> That's right. I f I no, I'm, I'm seriously so happy they, they listened and added this. This is the coolest feature of Mac OS. I don't care if the rest of Ventura isn't exciting. This alone I'm going to use all the time. I agree. It's that, amazing. I think you twisted my arm. I think, I think I'm going to put the beta on here. And I, <laughs> I'm just going to YOLO it. Because that's so cool. It's what I've always wanted. You're not going to partition? Oh, um, so get this. All I ever wanted, all that we've all kind of ever wanted, and you haven't said the word yet. At least I don't think you said the word on a video. It's all wireless, man. That's all I ever wanted. I just wanted a wireless, cool, in-office, home studio thing. Streaming, uh -huh. I'm not trying to get 4K at 60. That's not... That's not gonna work. I just want it to. I want it to. <clears throat> dare well, I say? The depression won't let you I anyway. Won't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The depression won't let me. You're right. So. <laughs> Relatable. Compression. Depression. To, to to be fair, that's what I heard in the playback. So you know, blame AirPods. Oh, okay. Um. 
<laughs> I just I just want a cool, simple, easy to sit up and, and like what listen, you guys, I know you know this. To any of our uh, listeners or viewers that like to dabble with the with the content creation, you guys would understand that behind the lens is nothing but a mess of cable management and I got cables galore. Yep. And every yep. day I think about, man, how can I just make I feel cluttered in the mind just for looking at wires everywhere what you don't see is by design it is all yes. trickery i am hiding everything doing this <laughs> with the camera with the iphone camera takes away two ports or two cables right there the hdmi mm-hmm. and uh technically the battery I, or uh me feeding the power, power source three if you want to include using the mic uh, because as people mm-hmm. have ran their polls and tested it for Drew's streams, I can only attest to his. No, they did it for mine too. You guys seem to like the onboard mics more than our dedicated mics that we have set up sometimes. And uh, it's true. Yep. That that's a testament to say that that you have to use one or the other, but you 100% can just work off of the onboard stuff, and it works that well. It comes in that clear. The clarity is what matters more than anything. So having mm-hmm. three. Things solved right there with no cables, no power source, no nothing. I want to try it so bad. <laughs> I think you'll love it. I I loved t- testing it out because as soon as it activated, I was just like, whoa. Like, there's just, you're not used to seeing that kind of quality in OBS and through, you know, not a cam link, you know, not a video capture card. The fact that it can do that without occupying a port. Um, the only downside is it kind of takes away my phone in a lot of use cases. Like, you know, I wanted to try the portrait watch face and sometimes I I want to show something in iOS 16 I found, but I'm like, nope, the phone's there. So I haven't used my iPad all week because of the iOS 16 changes. However, that's where I will cave in. the one thing. The one thing I needed the iPad for was a video camera when I was uh, filming iOS 16 changes like i need a <laughs> i need something to film the ios screen and i i don't want to get the whole black magic out i want something i can airdrop real quick and the ipad is i don't know it's basically kind of being used as like a secondary phone at this point it's like i just wanted another airdrop equipped camera for quick cutaway shots for quick b-roll what's an only, ipad only reason i wish yeah I feel like I could just have a second iPhone at this point, and that would get the job done. Hmm. Is that too much to have an iPhone just as a webcam, and that's all it does? Not if you get the iPhone 13 mini. There you go. Ooh, that's Bingo. a good idea because that has a great sensor. Because now you already have and a dedicated Apple. I camera could justify that the cost now. For. And now, you, yeah, you could justify getting a mini that you use. Four. And the 60 hertz so doesn't this. matter because uh, you'll never see it. No. <laughs> Bingo. Gents, I'm going yeah, to grab me a mini. <laughs> what's weird is when the iPhone is plugged in, I leave it plugged in because I want it to use a wired connection, even though the Wi-Fi seems to be freaking out. Um, it says charging on hold in control center. Ooh. So I don't believe it charges the phone. And if I check control center on the phone, it says that Charging is on hold due to heat. So yeah. using the camera as a webcam does seem to make the phone pretty hot. And it doesn't gain a charge. So luckily the 13 Pro Max has a very long battery life. So I don't think I'm going to kill it in, in one sitting. But that may potentially be a problem, you know, because I will. time usage for the Mini. Yeah, I, I do not every day, but occasionally do like six or seven hour long. Yeah, live Drew, streams. you got we got we need to talk about that. You're <laughs> not right now. <laughs> they just keep going and going and going. So it's I wonder the how long the keynote 13 stream mini I've ever last. seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was it was a a big commitment, but yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I wonder how battery life will age with battery health and that kind of thing if you use it as a webcam all the time um and i will admit while i have not caved uh if they come out with an iphone 15 with thunderbolt and say that when you plug this in you can get a 
4K at 60 video feed directly into the Mac. Because I can tell what the specs are right now, OBS tells you. So, you know, you select the iPhone camera at the list of camera options, and it, it says 1080p. What you going to say if there, they Drew? introduce... <laughs> I'm just saying that's the closest you've got. You me like Krabby Patties, don't you, Squidward? <laughs> <laughs> I do. No, no. Man, no. I want a burger. But <laughs> I'm not saying that would get me to upgrade. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that's the closest I could see is like, you're not upgrading your phone, you're upgrading your camera, um, specifically for something I'm going to use for live streaming or potentially like I could see myself using this feature for videos. If I start recording, I could I could record my iPhone footage directly into my computer, bypass AirDrop, bypass the import process, and it's just already baked into the laptop, and you just drag it into Final Cut and start editing. That would save a lot of time. The quality's a lot better than a webcam is, so I think it would be more tolerable for people, um, especially if I'm filming more in the car in the future. Yeah. Uh, so that's... That's high on the list of tempting features to get Drew to upgrade is improving the camera continuity. I don't think the iPhone 14 will get much better because it'll still have lightning. So, but if uh, the 15 has like get... a... Yo, what if, just humor me, Drew. What if they got it wrong okay. and we get it this year? We get Thunderbolt this year. Oh. Is that it? <laughs> um, you're, you're tempting me, but I don't, I don't think I would necessarily... Uh, it would, it would have to be how much better it is. Like, if you can capture it at full 4K at full 60 FPS. Okay, fine. Um, you twisted my arm, and I will give you the midnight <laughs> black uh, iPhone Pro. Like, that oh, the yeah. they just go all out with yeah. trying to there, win. There you go. This all right, final <laughs> offer with the midnight midnight black iPhone 14 Pro Max. I'd need to do a side by side. I, I'd need to do a. That's like, not a no. I'll take noticeable. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a possible. All right. Uh, it's not a guarantee that like yes, if they do that, I will. It's like I, I'd need a side by side to compare the two, um, I, and see if it's noticeably better. I don't think it will be. I think it'll be about the same as this. I'll I'll still review the 14. I'll try it out and see if it's noticeable. But this is going to be an um, exciting time for Mike, regardless, because he's going to get himself one heck of a phone this year, knowing what we know I'll with the software. Yeah, for with two it, years, for for the <laughs> iMac you're running now, and for the phone you're again, you're you're going to have quite the little setup here at the end of the year, running some good some good stuff, man. I'm excited for you. I was a bit worried about Dub Dub, I guess, going back to it, because if they were going to release an M2 for the Mini or the Mac Mini, mm. uh, I I would have considered that heavily, just because it'd probably have more ports than what I've got currently on this beautiful white bezeled display. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> zero, oh. zero issues with it at all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, going for the M2 Mini would have been nice. But I'm more interested, I guess, now with now knowing that you can use your phone as a camera. Just uh -huh. the, the possibilities with mounting it on the iMac here or being able, like what you were saying, be able to take it around. Like, if I were to record in this little office, it's not too far. I could lay down and that's like six feet. I'm already, like, at the door. So mm. I could I could do a lot of stuff in here. So it's... It's exciting, especially with the 14 on the horizon, uh, what will happen. It's, it's actually more going to be jarring comparing the, uh, the camera size from the first stove top look to that's right. this new iteration that's just going to be bigger sensors and all that likely that just take over the whole phone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It will. I'm, a, I'm a tad worried about the 14 just because, like... You've mentioned your concerns, Drew, with the camera sensor being way too big, not being able to mag safe charge. But then I don't uh -huh. really want to go for like the Pro Max because then you're borderlining this form factor <laughs> of like Yeah, yeah it's I, close. I like sketching on it, but it's like, well, why don't I just take the pencil and put it on the phone? Why why won't Were it work? so uh, easy? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not the gonna words of the arbiter, to just, were it so easy. Yeah. 
I'm not going to downgrade to a regular iPhone either because I like having this camera. Um, it's very mm. useful, and it seems like Apple's just going full steam ahead with it, with stuff like integrating the phone as a camera, a wireless camera that you can use to record stuff on OBS or anything else that you want to record it on. Yeah. Uh, so This strengthens the ecosystem so much more now. Absolutely. Like, the fact that it's first party just built in that you can just select the iPhone in a drop down menu now as your webcam and it captures a really solid image wirelessly and the audio like I you are just not going to get that on your PC. No, you're going to have to no. download some program and it's going to use some jerry rig way to do it probably only via wired and if you try to do it wirelessly it freaks out with the internet drivers that are on your Windows machine versus what's on the Android. And Android camera APKs are already terrible. That's why people complain about Instagram and Snapchat on Android as is. So it is it is just that much stronger now, the ecosystem. As, despite my complaining about iPadOS, I still f I've never felt more ingrained at this point. Like for my job now, for work, Literally. I'm going to be using an iPhone and a Mac Mm -hmm. And to try to replace that with a non-Apple setup is going to be miserable. It's not going to be as fast. It's not going to be as integrated. And it's not going to look as good. It's like there's just and more the cables, and more downsides. Man. The cables. Ugh. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. Hey, Mike, may Getting I, closer. May mm -hmm. I uh, throw a... Uh, Don't throw anything at me. I want to throw <laughs> a, a, a rebuttal for you about the regular iPhone if you're getting worried for iPhone 14. Mm -hmm. Telephoto doesn't work on the webcam stuff anyway, so I agree with you. I rather have the telephoto, and I do use it enough for me to play around with the two. But for you, necessarily in the office space and stuff like that, um, I actually feel more comfortable than ever not having a telephoto. I would, I would absolutely take ultra wide over anything else. Um, but take, I want you to take. Comfort takes all knowing that like if you're like, oh, I don't know which one to get if the, if if the camera bump is so big and it's going to interfere with something, this would actually be the time where I myself, if I was in the market this year, I would most likely not get a pro strictly because the camera systems are always met on par, whether it's the regular or the pro with what they're integrating in there. The only difference I think we saw with the 13 series was the night. The, 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 the aperture is a little bit different, so ultra wide on the Pro is better, but they have the exact same main uh, wide angle lens, which 90% of the time, that's going to be your default anyway, especially when you're filming inside or taking photos inside. If you try to punch in, it does a digital zoom anyway. It doesn't want to move over to the, uh, the, uh, the telephoto. So I think this year would be the time to do it because rumors have it that the iPhone 15 is the one that's going to give you the... Uh, that periscope anyway periscope? So, yeah, yeah so we might see something new so if there was ever a time to maybe feel Take comfortable a with a, a regular it would be this one and if and i'm speaking as if i'm telling myself that let's say i'm not strong enough to to withstand i'm like i'm just gonna get a new phone this year i feel confident enough to say just with how drew's describing his workflow now and how that kind of parallels with what we all kind of do in our own perspective fields Regular iPhone 14, I think, would be perfect for cost, bump, uh, efficiency. And if we're just trying to buy our time until we get a Thunderbolt iPhone anyway, then I definitely would take the, the, the cheaper approach out of anything um, and not really worry about it. So don't uh, I don't want you to feel too too worried about iPhone 14. I think you, I th I'm really excited for you this year. I think you are going to be in the best position of an upgrade this time, and I'm going to look forward to watching your how that unfolds for you because I'm, I'm going to live vicariously through that it's a good time i think <laughs> yeah i i'm really excited even though people are kind of uh, i'm pretty sure it will be kind of like an s year for the iphone in a way not too many big upgrades sure but i'm still excited i mean i've missed out on everything on 12 and 13 uh yeah the other one in here yeah. but like again my whole pattern on getting phones is i get the model year <coughs> right before it changes drastically all the time. Uh, I got the 5S before it went from the nice 
edges down to the rounded edges on the six mm-hmm. and then with the i guess for the 11 pro uh it got the new camera sensor but it was the last year at least recently that we had rounded corners mm-hmm. and then yep. went to back to the original you design. get the most refined version of each chassis basically yeah 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 so it, it kind of makes me want to continue that and i'm hoping that the 14 kind of maybe spells the end for the very flat edges and then the 15 maybe adopts something like the original iPhone with um, a straight edge on the front but then a curved edge on the back so that way it's nicer to hold and all that. Hopefully, That's next on the list of tempting Drew features. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's my preferred chassis design. iPhone 3G was the most comfortable little thing I ever had. I was like, wow. I held on to that well into like, like it I couldn't get any more software. But it was updates. terrible on a desk. It was. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's slightly uh, no. I had wobbled. it in a leather case thing, and I just always had it, like, face down. I was like, oh, whatever. It's, it, <laughs> I the iPhone... F- yeah. Remind me, does the iPhone touch, or did it have that form factor before? It so did. I remember well, I don't know what the like iPhone that. touch is. Or He's talking okay. about the iPod touch. Yes. Again, I can't uh, speak <laughs> good no more. Uh the iPod, yeah, the iPod Touch wasn't touch. completely rounded like the 3G was. I think it had it was some fairly it, rounded, but it was flat mostly. Okay. It had the rocking still on out. the table. Yeah. It did. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Because I remember I being able I, to like spin it around like that because it didn't yeah, have you, to find it. It, it rocked on the, on the table. But Drew's right. It, there's more curvature on the iPhone. Um, I think that's more of a necessity at that point for the iPhone 3G. I'm think I don't remember the original one but 3g it, it needed to do that because that's how, how the uh, antennas were able to get out of the plastic for it um so it was always meant to be very open with the back so that way it can get the the signal out um whereas like iphone 2g that the plastic part was on the bottom because that's where the signal was at mm. um right it would be interesting i mean you got me thinking about that mike i never thought about that what what if they brought that just for nostalgic reasons. I mean, they're doing it with the IMAX. What if they just did another special edition, a genuine SE uh, for 15 iPhone? 15 years of iPhone or whatever. I guess 15 Something. iterations of iPhone in a way. That would be cool to see how they modernize that today. I would not mind seeing a form factor for that. It might not be for me, but I would be like, hey, that's a cool looking phone. <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be more comfortable. I still feel like the the squared off design isn't more comfortable than the iPhone 11. With was. this brick? No way. <laughs> yeah. No, it cuts in cuts in your hands a lot. But I like, like the flat look. I mean, it, it looks cool, but it doesn't feel better. It, it's best for B-roll to sit it up, but Mike absolutely has the most comfortable iPhone. I think. Yeah, I agree. When I go years. dancing, I don't feel this thing in my pocket really. It's it's nice and smooth. <laughs> it's not cutting into my leg and all that. When I look at, when I saw Drew's phone for the first time in person, I'm like, and he puts this in his pockets? <laughs> How? I have big pockets. Mm-hmm. I can fit the iPad mini in my pockets. Same. Uh, and pretty still, I looked at your phone, I'm like, yikes. <laughs> no thanks. I would love it. Honestly, I wouldn't mind if they went back to the iPhone 11 rounded design, but got the bezel as thin as it is on the Series 7, mm. where it's like, the pixels are like spilling over the edge a little bit all the way around. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate that look. I'm sure they could get the, the palm rejection or whatever the touch sensitivity good enough so that it wouldn't, you wouldn't accidentally set it off when holding it. Yeah. But, mm. I think there's a there's a clean way to do it. Like the Series Seven has the thinnest bezel of any Apple product I've ever seen. I'd like to see, eleven Pro Max size but with, bezel razor thin around the edges that would be a good Mm -hmm. look and it'd be comfortable you'd get a bit more light refraction on the edges but i think i think it'd work well yeah Yeah. i don't know ever since listening to mkbhd with his dream phone or maybe not dream phone but ideal tiny phone basically being Mm. like a 13 or 12 mini uh, but with like a pro camera and all that, like that sounds amazing, but it, I don't think it's going to happen in, at this point. It sounds like if anything, it would be huge. What sounds more probable is getting more phone features on the Mac because if they cater to those people <laughs> who want to use their phone as a camera for their Mac, then maybe uh-huh. put the watch app on 
uh, the Mac. So that way, in your case, Drew, you can fiddle with watch settings, not on your phone because your phone's being occupied, but you could do it on the computer. So it's just, it becomes yeah. more of, like you said, a tight knit system. It's so uh-huh. strong to where you're, or you can't really buy a computer as a phone, but if you pair it with your phone, you're able to do so much more. You're able to use your computer as a pseudo phone, uh, mm. but also in the same way, utilize your phone for different uses that you wouldn't think. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. It gets me excited, but at the same time, I'm sad that the Mini Pro will probably never be a thing. Uh if they ever make yeah. that, and I just bought my phone the year prior, I, I don't care. I'll sell off that phone and immediately get a mini phone. <laughs> so I like the small form factor, and that's, I think uh-huh. that's maybe my biggest worry about the 14, is no matter what, I'm going to a bigger size phone. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I believe the 11 is a different size than the 13. Yep. Uh, it is. Base. So already, I'm getting a, spa- or a size upgrade, which... I, I'm fine with this form factor. I don't need anything bigger than this. So already I'm like, every yeah. every 14 will be bigger than the 11 Pro. Even the even the tiny one is bigger than the 11 Pro. Mm-hmm. So there's no way around it. Uh, 13 Mini would be your best bet if you wanted something smaller. But I yeah, want the camera. I, yeah, I know. I'm still really impressed with the the cameras on the the non telephoto cameras on the 13 are still very very good. I'm using it right now and i'm impressed by that main sensor and now that we have the m2 chip people were deducting that there's a 8k uh hevc encoders within the new silicon so people are taking that as confirmation that iphone 14 is going to get an 8k record uh record mode at the high efficiency codec um and because the the main sensor megapixel count is rumored to be increased to like 48 megapixels or something. I have a hard time visualizing how that will look much better than it already looks because I'm still impressed with this. And I think the limiting factor is not megapixels. I think it's the size of the sensor and the size of the lens and how much light that can capture. I think that's what's preventing cameras from getting better. But then again, the lens and the camera bump is rumored to get bigger this year. So maybe that's how they're they're addressing that is it'll capture more light and it'll have a bigger sensor so it'll be it'll be impressive to see how much better the camera gets but uh now that i'm going to be using my iphone camera more than ever before by far i used to use it a couple of times a week maybe just to take pictures and videos of stuff but now that i'll be using it as a webcam and uh my live streaming camera and potentially my video recording camera like the usage of my iPhone has shot up a lot, so I feel it's that. making me want Thunderbolt even more than ever before. But yeah, it's I'm on it's board with gotten this. a lot more. Pe- Using the iPhone for everything minimizes everything else, and I will always cannibalize my current setup for seamless efficiency of a single thing. Like the iPhone could very well do if i listen if iphone ran logic and final cut and did all that other stuff too i would find a way with the thunderbolt to cook it connect it to a monitor i would set that sucker down and you that guys sounds would watch awesome me. i would work i would off love of that <laughs> like that that's just how the iphone powers yeah. everything you just dock mm-hmm. it it's the brain it's the chip and it's the I little would, tube I, thing kind of like in kenobi except it's your, just plug into everything yeah, yeah except it's your camera too so you yeah. would have to have you you couldn't dock it on a little you know old lightning dock or whatever. It would have to True. still stay on top of the monitor you're using. But it would connect to a MagSafe it's, connector, where it charges it. Oh yeah, there you go. And it feeds the information. Power it by MagSafe. Get and get your Thunderbolt. It plug it in and that gets all the data put, through the Thunderbolt. That's right. I would do that. We just have to wait till the A series of chips beats the M1 Max chip and M1 Pro chip. Once yeah. that happens, iOS needs mac os <laughs> that's it that's the answer it now. All, the, it's no longer the final iPad mac, getting OS, mac drew. os yes it's now your iOS best mac, mac is the one you have with you <laughs> <laughs> drew's just like how do we put mac os in blank how do we put yes. it in the magic mouse how do it, we right, put it eventually in this we'll cup? 
We'll bake Mac OS into more and more things. Well, now that it's running on Apple Silicon, there's less excuses. that You can't say, like, well, it, Mac OS needs... It's like, no, not really. No. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you're... I was going to say your battery would be of concern, but the iPhone battery would have power at all times. So I guess it wouldn't be a great MacBook alternative, but for desktop setups, it could be a great uh, replacement to an iMac or a Mac Mini if the iPhone silicon gets fast enough, which... You just buy with a the three nanometer one, architecture, and yeah, you just need a really pretty monitor, and then the iPhone does the rest. I'm at the point now where I'm like, just get rid of the webcam on my on my laptop, mm -hmm. or the iMac. Like, I don't need those anymore. No, why bother? You I gotta, have something like, better. Like, who's buying these Macs and doesn't have an iPhone? Just like just Android, use that I now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> People who like their Android you just phone don't... but use a MacBook Pro for business or whatever. I think that's maybe the only demographic that you might be talking about. Eh. We may tick off those people, but... Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. It just Why can't we do face... I Let's do face ID on the iPhone. Uh, on the Mac, too. Like, it has LiDAR on the back. And it has the true depth camera system on the front. So, like, if you, you can have really your phone set up in a way... And it if the, if, if unlocks the magic that... keyboard could do touch ID, the phone should be able to do face ID. Yeah, and you unlock your Mac via Face ID using the the included sensors. Free ideas, so Apple. Much potential. Free ideas. Free ideas. <laughs> I love this concept. Now I'm imagining. Maybe I should. Maybe I should put a my foot down on something. Remember when I was trying to think of a feature that would get me to upgrade my phone? That's it. What we just pitched. If the iPhone could become the Mac, and See, then that's when one terabyte iPhones start to make sense. Yes, is if true. that's your whole, that's, that's your, your whole machine. Unless the monitor has some storage, or all you're buying is oh. monitor and storage, in which then Apple just sells dedicated storage towers, and so you're not really buying <laughs> a computer anymore. You're buying an iPhone, a display, and a storage tower, and then a keyboard all. and mouse, and I guess maybe some cables if you need wow. cables but you might not even because now like randy was saying it's basically becoming all wireless the only thing that is plugged into the wall is the uh monitor and then uh -huh. maybe the storage tower for all your digital needs but maybe that just plugs into the uh display as well yeah the the monitor could provide additional io because mm -hmm. the iPhone only has one port, but if you plug the iPhone into the monitor, then you have additional USB-C ports. You can plug in more accessories and drives and stuff. So, oh. Yeah, and Samsung's already putting Xboxes in their displays, or at least that's what they announced yesterday at Gamescom, I think. So oh, really? I already, monitors are becoming cool. more smarter. You're getting integrated computers into these things, or you kind of yeah. go the way that you're thinking about, Drew, is... It's got everything but the brains, and all you do is provide the brains, and then, I mean, it's a Mac. You don't need it to do crazy things, just enough to edit. So, eh, maybe it becomes like the studio display, where you need a little bit of RAM in there, so that way you can run. Yeah, it's got an A13. Pro. Yeah. So, so that can work in tandem with the, the iPhone. I like this future. Wow. Do that. Do that, Apple. I want it. I'm sold on this idea. I, I don't know if that's where they're going, but... I just want to applaud Apple for, for listening with the, the continuity camera thing and, and say, keep going with this. Keep pushing the iPhone and Mac collaboration. This is this is the marriage I, I want to see more of, you know? Like, I ship this. IPad? I'm shipping these two. Ah, it's all I'm about the iPhone, throwing the baby. the iPad out. Leaving the iPad on the fireman's doorstep, you know? It can just <laughs> stay there and be forgotten. Oh, no. iPhone and Mac, though. These two need to, to collab more, do more things together. I'm but all Drew, it. we already talked about this. When the time comes, the iPad must become a Mac. Oh, like <laughs> it did with the M1 chip? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking like of, did you, did you hear the report of them doing a 14-inch iPad Pro later this year? 14? Why, yeah. Why would go? I already have like the the biggest one that they ever made, the twelve point whatever, or is it eleven? What's the one I had? It was like the second generation iPad. Uh, second gen iPad Pro. 
Yeah. First gen, first gen iPad Pro had the. Uh, it's the biggest one they ever made. Uh, the you're talking about with the with the with the bigger bezels that it had. Yeah. Yeah, that's the first gen iPad Pro. That the twelve point nine inch iPad yeah. Pro. Yeah. That that sucker was, that was up there. Yeah, massive. Yeah. So fourteen inches just sounds insane, silly, thicky. Actually, I've so, I've given up all my hope, but I'm curious if Randy thinks like an M2 chip equipped 14 inch iPad is that gonna get some kind of software exclusives? Yeah, they're gonna they're Ooh. gonna find a way to push you to get an M whatever, okay, uh, iPad <laughs> and whatever. Uh, yeah, so this, this is like he's. Bleeding out of his wherever. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think M2 will find a way to do some proprietary baloney and say, ah, see, but with the M2, you'll be able to. At this point, Apple knows what's wrong with iPad. They are not blind to this. They know. They are just they choosing do. to wait for whatever reason. But it is not like Apple to just, oh, all right, yeah, we're going to retroly go fix and retcon all this. No, it's like, okay, M2, baby, get the M2 with the LiDAR that you're never going to use, and you're going to be able <laughs> to have interactive widgets or a customized lock screen. You need the M2 chip for that. So they're, they're <laughs> going to do something. I'm sure. I'm sure they're going to do something. I've given up. All hope of anything actual useful with iPad, genuinely. Mm -hmm. So not you don't think they would put pro apps on just M2 iPads? Oh! You think they'd go that far? If you Because think of the no. price hikes, too. The 14-inch iPad has to cost more than the already fairly expensive $1,100 Pro. And you would have to buy a whole new keyboard case. So this would be like... If you buy our special $1,400 iPad Pro and get our new $400 keyboard case, then you can have the privilege of spending $300 on Final Cut and putting it on the iPad once you've spent See, you know, two thing. grand I, on this I, iPad with an M2 chip. It's too obvious, and they won't do it because <laughs> iPad has to be weaker than Mac. And two, if they do it, it's going to be Final Cut Lite, Logic Lite, Logic light x you know it's it's not gonna have the full it'll be iMovie plus the, it is iMovie plus it's garage band plus it's just gonna have some weird uh -huh. quirk about having to have that like everything is locked to the center and so you scrub your video footage or you do the same thing with the music right it's, it's all touch it's, optimized yep. it's, i've i've given up on on the pro applications in a way that would work and to me a pro application means genuinely multitasking, which it still doesn't do with the stage manager. That's not multitasking. That's just mm -hmm. showing you what you have in the back. That's, that's you swiping up to your, uh, 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 what is it? Right. You open up and you, the dock. All those, the, yeah. you, you just have all that stuff presented to you differently. It's not multitasking. It's not layering mm -hmm. windows that do two things at once. I can't run, uh, like the best multitasking we have is something you even have on the phone. It's PIP. That's your multitasking. We have PIP. Uh -huh. That's anything else. It's not there. I can't be on Twitter and be on YouTube at the exact same time unless I'm playing a video from YouTube. YouTube is the one that has to compromise there. You know, Twitter doesn't mm -hmm. need to, to lift a finger and neither does Discord or anything else. And those are just mm -hmm. social media apps. <laughs> now you want to throw in a, a final cut and you're trying to pull an uh you're trying to lift an image off of something to drop it into final cut i do not see them giving you that type of skill without you having to scroll over to safari get the image save it to your photos scroll to your photos hold the image lift the png scroll two yeah. times back to final cut drop it in it's, <laughs> it's you lost me at scroll for yep. the first time <laughs> <laughs> But I guarantee it's like the opposite. Really it, that's how they do it. You had me at scrolling. Now he's you lost <laughs> me at scrolling. You lost me at hello. You lost me at iPad. 
I'm oh, actually God. more excited, t- to be honest with you, with this rumored. Did you see the Mac rumor report that they are going to revisit the 12 inch MacBook? Yeah. No, that got me excited. I was that, like, really? They're they're coming back. It's that going has full me going. Circle. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. Like um, a super air. Yeah. yeah. T- tell me why I'm more excited about what Mac is doing than iPad. That's a problem with iPad. I don't, I don't care about the iPad hardware anymore. That's the point I'm, I think I'm making with it. I'm more excited about treating the Mac like an iPad than treating the iPad like a Mac because the software is what makes and breaks everything and iPad will never iPad OS will never be Mac OS and I've accepted that last year so let's make Mac OS as light in hardware as an iPad and 12 inch MacBook go on you were saying proceed go that's on exci- that's more exciting to me yeah, yeah. Hmm. no I I loved that form factor when I tried it. I I couldn't live with the performance, but it right. was bizarre using a Mac where you could type with just your thumbs. That's how small <laughs> it was. Jeez. You could hold it like an iPad mini. You can like type in landscape. Yeah. It was it was like typing on that. I was just holding the whole laptop in my hands and it was not heavy. It was not causing fatigue and I'm excited to try the new MacBook Air redesign because it looks fancy and uh, thin, and I'm I'm excited to try that. But uh, still, I, I like seeing Apple go even harder in that direction when they go ultra thin, razor razor thin, lightweight, and uh, you can cut. Yeah, that got me pumped. It. That, you, it, it's pretty much because we care about the software. Mac OS is Mac OS, right? And we're not going to get the iPad of our dreams, so we're going to do it in a different way. We are going to compromise on yes. the hardware to make Mac be as close to the iPad. If I don't understand why it's so hard to give us LTE or 5G and give us everything know, that the that's iPad bizarre. has. The, give us the iPad, the feature, the options. Give you everything the iPad has. And just what that – it has the same chip. Just put Mac OS. It is possible – this is the hill I die on. This is where I put my foot down. It is completely possible, and they choose not to. And because they're not going to do that, stylist, face ID, um, cellular support, uh, magic keyboard, all that stuff. Okay, fine. iPads put to the side. Now, let's make the MacBook as thin, as light, as 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 portable, as a power efficient as the ipad was and maybe we can, with these you know notches now let's get face id at some point as a possible another biometrics um sure i'm not even worried about the camera anymore because you know here we go we will use this with ventura going forward yeah so, we got the best camera now yeah we, we got the best camera so i'm not even worried about camera anymore just give us the the portability of the ipad put that in the lightest mac possible running what say it with me now mac os done now we can do pro applications on a portable device and we can take it anywhere and we're good Uh and we're happy so i care now i'm all about that future i'm I'm a mac guy all over again i've given up on ipad oh yeah for sure me too so to answer your question Um, drew no i don't think we're gonna get pro applications ever on ipad okay they just fundamentally will will limit the ipad regardless of how good the hardware is Basically, they'll continue doing what they've been doing. Exactly. They, had to they should go into portability invent. with the iPad at this point. Like, give us a folding iPad mm. or give us a roll-up iPad. Why not at this point since we're not going to yeah. get anything interesting with it? Let's go crazy with the hardware. Sure. You've already displayed that you can yeah, make like a already there. an iPad. Just now They're make already it roll. crazy with the hardware. <laughs> uh-huh. Make it fold up. I mean, make it even more pocketable with the iPad Sphere. iPad Mini Fold or something. Sphere know. iPad. Yeah, just get weird with the hardware since the software obviously isn't going anywhere. Don't even want to give the thing optimized battery charging, for God's sake. Like, okay, just show me what weird crap you can come up with then. Something cooler than just a slightly larger size. I don't I don't think that's going to convince me. Well, now I need to upgrade. There's a 14-inch iPad now. That's $1,200, $1,300. Like, uh, Spotify. Make like the 
iPad for cars, where like you you dock it on <laughs> somewhere on your car, and then it, it's mainly for yeah, commuting and listening to music and all that. But it's like in a nice form factor to where you can put it in any car. Do that, since you're gonna take forever. They did say with... it would get MagSafe. I don't know yeah. why or how, but you can Maybe MagSafe your iPad to the dash. <laughs> oh God. I would so many that. magnets in the <laughs> iPad already. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. the steering wheel. It's big, a big iPad that you just rotate around everywhere. But yeah, that's I'm right Project there with Titan. you. I'm all in on. They the just Mac turned now. the iPad into a steering wheel for Project Titan. Yeah, <laughs> we're not doing anything interesting with this device anymore. We'll just lump it in with something that we won't acknowledge. That because works. we're not already That's acknowledging it. it already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. This Do you guys does, have though, any final thoughts? Oh, I just want to say, this discussion just makes me more excited about the future of Mac and iOS. Mm. Um, me too. I think m- summarizing it, even for like the watch, it'd be nice to... I'm not saying just square it off, because that'll make everyone happy. But doing something else to <laughs> rekindle some interest in the watch, to go along with what seems like the end or the 2020s will be is the the kings of the <laughs> Apple industry will be iOS and macOS. So let's add something else Agreed. to that to get a trifecta or something else that will get us excited for yeah. Mac de- or I guess Apple devices. It can be iPhone, Mac, and AirPods. That'll be the trifecta. <laughs> Just really good headphones. Like that'll ever happen. Hopefully with Type-C. <laughs> yeah, luck that's never gonna happen. What a load of... <laughs> Any final words, Randy? <laughs> no. no. I've said all I needed to say. <laughs> well, right. behave. And thank you all for watching. (laughs) And uh, hope, hope you have an excellent rest of your week. Take care. Bye bye. Bye, guys.